Hi everyone. So this is another review that was uh, generated by a suggestion by a viewer a couple days ago. I keep like uh, screenshotting these things so I can give people credit and but I'm always bumping up against the limit of my phone so I'm always like <laughs> erasing things in mass. So um but uh it was a good it was a good story so I'm not going to bury the lead. Um it, it is a um I'm, I'm going to have to talk through it to, sit, to decide if I'm going to actually recommend it. Um, I, it's definitely not getting ripped. <laughs> so I'm not going to keep any in suspense. The ripping was a big hit. That's also a, a reader suggestion. I kept ripping stuff that was terrible, and then they're like, do it on camera. So I actually, like I said, I read all of the comments. Um, so I see everything you all say. <laughs> and so to start off with, the, this cover is so good that I actually gave it some more thought and then I realized that it's so good that it was almost great and they just missed a couple of things. Number one, the cover is fake news. This never happens. Deadpool never um, tries to hit Frank with a snake and, and uh, uh, Frank never tries to bash Deadpool's face in with a very reasonably sized rock. <laughs> it's, it's very uh, much in the realm of possibility to have that rock. I would have made it bigger. Um, it, the whole thing takes place on a boat at sea, like way in the middle of the ocean. But we get this like forest thing. So two things happened. Either number one, this is just like they've decided to do a bit where it's just all like portfolio pieces as covers. Or number two, this is just an editor not editing. And I think that's a whole other video how editors basically stopped editing. They effectively hire friends or sycophants. And then they, uh, the sycophants just do whatever they want. And the friends, they just let the friends do whatever they want. So we start off with the, with the full page summary, which to me is a huge waste. Um, but one thing I've noticed about these is, <laughs> excuse me, I think... These summaries are written by the writers because I noticed the quality of them varies wildly. And this one is very, very well done. Uh, it's written by Fred uh, Van Lente, who I'll talk about some more. He's one of those guys who, um, he doesn't leave much of an impression. He's kind of average, uh, but he doesn't leave a bad impression. He's, he he's kind of reminds me of like a, a TV writer. You're going to get a solid story with the beginning, middle, and end. There's going to be some twists. He never disappoints you, but he never really gets you excited. Um, so he tells a story that's fairly complicated, and yet he summarizes it so well that I'm I, I'm jumping into issue four, and I feel very solid about this. So um, oh, back to the cover and how it could have been great. So this composition is excellent, and it really shows someone who knows how to draw, who isn't just using photos or computer, you know, 3D models to learn how to draw. Um, but one of the things that kind of drove me nuts is I looked at this composition. And it's rather flat. It's as, it, it's as if there was a stage right here and they knew you were standing on it. And they're like, let's both face the camera. But here's the deal. This, so let's say this is the axis of it. If it would have been turned like this, this would have gone from a very good co cover to a legend. It would have been one of those things they make posters of forever because it would have made it so much more dynamic. Deadpool and his first build would have been bigger. But then you would have the snake like really taking up like all this space. It's, there's kind of like boring stuff and like it's parental advisory. But you make the snake like this big. You twist it, then basically Frank is giving his crazy look straight at you. Like, and then the rock, you make the rock bigger. Besides that, I mean, it's great. I mean, it's definitely an A, but like I said, it could have been a legend. Um, so we get into the story and right away I go, ah. Okay, this guy is really, really using 3D models. Here's the deal, though. Um, he's, he uses them well. We get a good variety of um, panels and um, good storytelling. So, you know, it sets up that, you know, the basic story, Deadpool's on a, a container ship at sea. Uh, a uh, combat helicopter has crashed. So uh, you get into something right away. And the other thing I like is that Fred Van Lente doesn't telegraph. He doesn't, like, baby you. We don't get, like, a ton of dialogues saying, oh, man, I came here to find this kid, but I can't find him. I sure hope I find him before this happens. You realize um, from these, like, uh, little circles here that, uh, well, that means, <laughs> that means two things. Either um, uh, Deadpool is drunk or Deadpool is, like, just coming out of, like, a reverie or just waking up. So we get some little nice body language. Um, 
And then we get this good moody scene of him checking this. Now this is all 3D models. And I'm thinking it's just stuff he, he grabbed off of a, a Google SketchUp warehouse. But it's done artfully, so it works. Um, and then he spots the kid. Now again, kind of like with Iceman, and I'm gonna go into a tangent on this. So I bought the very first comic that Deadpool was in, which was, you know, Rob Liefeld uh, designed him and then he was in the New Mutants and then he was a major figure in X-Force. And I remember how he was, uh, Fabian Nicieza did the, the dialogue for those things. And his, it was the Merc with the mouth. He was a motor mouth. They kind of transformed him into, from just a motor mouth into kind of like a Bugs Bunny Spider-Man type. The problem is, not a lot of writers are funny enough to pull that off. The Deadpool writers from the movie could pull it off. But what we get are these really like Z-grade like Disney sitcom jokes. And like, I'll just read some. He's like, Hudson Banks, that's you. This this isn't the afterlife, right? Like some hacky lost afterlife where it's like a church or whatever. I don't know why um, Deadpool, who's like in his 30s, is using upspeak. Upspeak is the way like millennials talk where they like ask a question when it's a statement. Uh, that thing, it's called upspeak. So he's doing upspeak and then like he just does like a bunch of little failed jokes. There's a good little part where he just kind of sits down and, and there's this cool thing where I'm guessing Fred Van Lente has kids because he writes kids like kids. He doesn't write them as like pre-adults. So there's this confusion where, where the kid's like, he's like, what's happening? He's like, the skull man is fighting the other skull man. And basically Deadpool's like, I'm going to kill the one that's the bad one. He can't tell it. So then we get into this. And I, and again, I think this artist is using 3D models uh, uh, because the body types are the same exactly for both the Punisher and Taskmaster. Now, Taskmaster is kind of cool because they do this kind of like, and actually, I really appreciated Fred Van Lente firmly doing this as a mainstream story. So one of the things, when the Deadpool movie was announced, I was dreading it because I hated the comics. Because I hate, the comics basically turned him into like a, uh, like a Tiny Toons type of character. The problem was, he didn't meld with the universe and they had to keep changing the universe to meet Deadpool. So it always felt like he had this like field around him that turned a mainstream story into like a pseudo Elseworld story. People would start to act out of character. Other people would talk to the camera. It felt like they all took place in a different universe. But this one definitely takes seems like it takes place. Um, Deadpool is definitely different, you know, and he's weird, but he's a human. And there's just a really good part where he basically says like, Oh, he's pissed and he's going to go kill someone. He doesn't have to do 20 pop, pop culture references, especially these middle-aged guys writing this stuff. They are really bad pop culture. I mean, Lost, wasn't that canceled like, or finished like eight years ago? Um, and then there was a, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm barely old enough to get this one. It's a, they do a, a is it live or is it Memorex? Which that's like a jingle from like 1984. So um, then he goes to go fight these guys, and then uh, this is kind of cartoony, um, but so he, so they have this like dirty banker, and then he has like an oil platform with a classic bank on it, and they have these money things. But I was like, all right, fine, it's comics. So then they do this thing where now recently, and it was uh, Nick Spencer did it. He had Taskmaster as like a sheriff in a town full of supervillains, and it was really dumb. And then uh, Captain America just laid him out in a couple of punches and like I said all the time about SJW writers they don't really know these characters so they just make them whatever Taskmaster doesn't get laid out the whole thing is he copies and analyzes and proves on your fighting style while he's fighting you so at some point they that they mention first of all one thing I didn't like is that uh, the, the Punisher doesn't talk like the Punisher he talks kind of like a like I said that alternate dead he's like making all these weird jokes and stuff um, but, um, Taskmaster at first seems kind of like a clown and you're like, oh, this is like the Taskmaster and they even re re reference him being a joke. Then the cool thing is, and then basically he turns it around. He's basically like, okay, I've analyzed you. And he starts like wrecking, uh, Frank. So, um, then, uh, Deadpool comes in and, and this is a really cool, fun panel because this, the, this page right here was so good that, you know, I was fully immersed and so in this scene, so then when Deadpool 
uh, Deadpool uh, pops up, and, and it's a very Deadpool kind of introduction. Um, the problem is he does like a setup for a joke, and then the punchline is terrible. He's like, "You who tasky," and then he says, "Long time no bleed." It's not funny. Oh, and then he does the. Uh, we both know your. Is it live or is it Memorex super memory? It's not really a super memory. It's more that he processes information very quickly. Um, uh, so I'm not sure what you know. I'm in IT, but I don't know what part of the brain it would be like a processor. Um, so then we get this cool thing where um, we start seeing that um, uh, Taskmaster is ask, actually using moves from Frank that he just learned. And uh, then we get this kind of, it's a pretty cool montage. Sometimes they get a little cutesy and twee with this stuff, but it, it's a good point where they're, where they're like mixing this big image with like inset images cut to other panels. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. And then sometimes you'll just get a little random like, Hook 'em horns, um, <laughs> uh, and then they both beat him. Which, like I said, I'm calling shenanigans on this. Like Deadpool and Punisher, they're not going to uh, do this uh, one hit or quitter on Taskmaster unless he wanted to. And then there's even this cool little part where um, uh, Taskmaster ca catches himself at least, so he's not a, he's not a joke. He just got punched and he didn't get knocked out or defeated. And then the kid who had kidnapped um, basically releases the uh, very well drawn. Uh, ladder I, again i think this is i think even these things are 3d models but like i said it's done artfully so it works and so he, he's not defeated but he's like he's out for right now so um then it gets to some kind of cringy joke where he talks about shipping like you know like ship like re relationship in two characters um but it sets itself up for the next one um spoilers 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 deadpool uh, somehow, and, I, and there was a little setup for that. It wasn't 100 percent, but I'm confident enough in Fred Van Lente's uh, abilities that he's shown that this was established well in the other things. Is that uh, I guess Frank had been shooting Deadpool in the head a lot, and then Deadpool finally realizes that he's doing that to basically mess with his memory. Um, so then he picks up one of uh, Taskmaster's guns. It looks like, and he shoots. Uh, I think you're supposed to knee-jerk say, oh, he just shot uh, Frank through the head. But this actually looks at having him, you know, before I, before I enlisted, I, I read a lot of uh, books about combat. And I recognize this pretty solidly as, a, as an in and out, where the bullet actually travels through the scalp and exits in the back. So, you know, they don't present it like that. You're supposed to go, oh, my God, he just shot him in the head. But this is really temple. It rides around to the outside and comes out the scalp. So uh, then he says, you know, he makes it clear, and I'm glad he made it clear. Sometimes dialogue is on the nose is cringy, but sometimes you need it. So he says, you've been shooting me in the head over and over again to erase my memory, haven't you? To be concluded. Blam. So we get a, uh, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm excited. Um, this is a good story. Uh, so just as like a review, so I was, I was like, would I recommend to read this? Um, if the way I described it is enticing to you, yeah, I would read it and it also I've got a good enough gauge from the team that I think I can vouch for before and after seems like a pretty good solid uh, uh, comic and especially when you compare it to the average comic uh, I didn't get any SJW politics um, I don't uh, I got a uh, several good action scenes I got a, a really good cover I got um, uh, an artist who wasn't the most dynamic artist but he definitely shows promise He's especially good at, at storytelling. I really liked his storytelling more than his draftsmanship. He used 3D models. He did them good. So yeah, I think I will change this to a uh, read it. Good comic. Uh, a real good uh, crew. I haven't heard of artist uh, Pere Perez. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, go ahead and read this. Or I might. It's not a command. <laughs> I'm recommending you read it. So uh Tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about Deadpool Punisher. Like me, were you sick of Deadpool until the movie came out? Oh, and just as an admin note for uh, Cheesesteak Gate, latest uh, update, I had a cheesesteak with Cheese Whiz, and it was, it was a complete clown show. Basically, the Cheese Whiz was like, it was like the bread was the prison, the, che the steak was the prisoners, and the Cheese Whiz was like the corrupt guards. Let, like... It was basically greasing the sandwich to let all the steak uh, fall out. 
So I ended up like covered in my food. I looked like a total clown. So I'm going back to white American cheese. It, 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 it glued it together, just like the Constitution glues our country together. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll have another video up. Oh, actually, I can show it right here. I'm doing this Steve Trevor uh, one later today because I heard there's some like uh, SJW inanity in this. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, I'm going to do this uh, amazing Spider-Man. So, thanks for watching. Have another video up later today.